joined by Republican Congressman Mario diaz Balart of Florida. Sir, it's great to have you joining our conversation, and let's talk about sequestration and, and what's coming. Explain to all of us, why do we, as a country, have to live through this? As we look at the uh, results of that poll, who's going to get the blame in all of this? Uh, Republicans are going to not come out of this so, so well. The GOPers have the weaker political position. Doesn't that worry you? No, what worries me is what's right for the country. Uh, look, uh, the reason we have sequestration, as we've now uh, uh, learned from both the White House and Bob Woodward's book, is because the president insisted on it. Uh, so we have sequestration. It's the, it's the, it's the fact of life. Um, it, we in the House have passed on two occasions legislation to replace the across-the-board cuts in sequestration to, frankly, reasonable, better uh, thought-out cuts. The president and the Democrats in the Senate have refused to, to do that. They have the right to not want to do that. The president in the past, you recall, said that he wasn't going to accept any changes to sequestration. Now the president is saying that he wants changes to sequestration. I agree with that thing. I think we should change uh, the sequestration, keep the level of cuts, but change uh, the, the, again, arbitrary nature of them, which is why I voted on two occasions uh, on legislation to pass the House to change the cuts in sequestration to, I think, uh, more well-reasoned cuts. Uh, but unfortunately, we've had no help from either the administration or the Senate. And we're, we hope that they will uh, come up with legislation that we can start negotiating on as to what the cuts should be. Now, I will tell you that's very interesting. We now know that the administration can single-handedly, th the first year of sequestration is $85 billion, roughly. Uh, we now know uh, that there's $115 billion in payments that have gone to people who either don't qualify them for them or, or, or it's frankly just uh, wrong payments, that could be done tomorrow. That's $115 billion just in waste uh, that has just been released. Uh, the president can do that tomorrow, but unfortunately, uh, it looks like we're going to go to the brink once again. Um, but we've passed legislation in the House to change the sequestration cuts. Yeah, I don't think anybody would uh, disagree with you on trying to shore up where waste is spent through our government. One thing I do want to get you on the record on is talking about Florida Governor Rick Scott and the fact that he's done this mea culpa turnaround on the Affordable Health Care Act and, and what that means to Floridians. Uh, also, what it means to how the press coverage of Rick Scott has been. As we look at this article from the Miami Herald, uh, it's quoting a Tea Party activist saying, this is just another example of Republicans lying to Floridians. This is an Everett Wilkinson of Palm Beach Gardens calling Scott a Benedict Arnold to the Patriot and Tea Party movement in Florida. Uh, is this just Rick Scott doing what's politically easy uh, for someone that is looking to seek re-election? You know, I think the reality is that there's a lot of pressure. Uh, you know, there is this so-called free money uh, that uh, is coming from the federal government to pay 100% of uh, Medicaid. And the reality is, is, you know, in the legislation, that 100% then starts being reduced. Uh, number two is that when you look at the CBO numbers in the future, uh, there is no such thing as 100% payment for Medicaid coming from the federal government to the states. I think Rick Scott was trying to see how he could deal with it in the future. And now I think the pressure is such, however, to take this free money uh, as if it's coming from no place. Uh, you know, we know where it's coming from. We're borrowing it mostly from China. Um, but after those first three years, uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens to the states when that federal money uh, starts drying up. And unfortunately, uh, whether one likes it or not uh, will dry up and then who's going to be left holding the bag is it the states is it the taxpayer through potential additional tax increases uh, we don't know uh, so i understand why governor scott uh, has a very tough choice to make i think all governors have a very tough choice to make because the problem with obamacare not only is the the numerous tax increases some that have kicked in others that are coming but also the the empty promises uh, this thing about the federal government's going to pay 100 percent but only for a few years and after that well we'll see what happens We'll see where that free money is going to come from. Uh, the states have very difficult choices to make, and, and that's what Jim Scott, uh, what uh, Governor Scott is dealing with. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Congressman Mario Diaz-Balart. I appreciate you making time for me.